Hello, on this episode of Math Meowtics, we're going to go over the 2018 star. So in question number one, we have our first question. It says, at a restaurant, jars of tomato sauce are stored in boxes in the pantry. And each box contains eight jars of tomato sauce. And a cook uses two jars from one of the boxes. Um, which function below shows the relationship between Y and the total number of jars of tomato sauce remaining in the pantry, and x the number of boxes in the pantry. Okay, so um, we have 8x here, and we have minus 2 because we use two jars. Um, the only equation that fits that question is our answer choice C. Um, 8 times the number of jars used inside and minus the number of jars used, he used 2. Um, B won't work, or A won't work, because there's nothing in our question representing 6. Uh, B won't work because we're not talking about the jars that were already used. It could work if we weren't already subtracting two jars from the number of the boxes. Um, number D as well, I don't know why they have 6 there. Uh, maybe a distractor. Uh, or maybe they're talking about 8 minus 2. Uh, yeah, that's where they get the 6 from. They do 8 minus 2. But your answer choice is C. All right. Number 2. Which expression is equivalent to negative 28x squared plus 35x? Okay, so we can, we can take out a negative 7. So that means we're going to eliminate f and we're going to eliminate g. So if we take out a negative 7 from our equation, um, really what they're doing here is they're making sure that you understand the relationship. That if I distribute a GCF of negative 7, that sign there is going to become negative. And the reason that it's become negative is because positive divided by a negative is going to give you a negative answer. So uh, of your answer choices, uh, you have G and J, and the only difference between is that negative inside. And that is testing to see that you remember and realize that when you divide by a negative number that you need to make it negative, okay? Because that positive 35X divided by a negative 7X is going to give us negative 5. Let's see, the next question. All right, which of the graph best represents no solution? Um, no solution means no intersection. I have an intersection there. I have one solution there. I have one solution there. Um, these, if I were to continue these on, they would eventually have a solution somewhere out there. Um, so my only obvious choice is going to be D. But we can double check to make sure we're going to check our slopes. So I'm going to pick two perfect points. I got to, oops, dang it. Too far ahead. Okay. Let me lock it. Okay. So I'm going to pick two perfect points. So I got a point there and a point there. And when I rise up, I go up two and my run is one. So I have a slope of two which means that this slope over here should also be two, rise up one, rise up two. It does have the same slope of two. So M is equal to two, so same slope. So that means they are parallel. And parallel lines, I know, I'm sorry, I can't spell. Parallel lines uh, will never intersect. We'll just write parallel lines. There we go. Will never intersect. I don't know why it's doing that. Oh, well. All right. We will move on. Okay. Um, so, number four. I'm going to go into the next video on that, and then we'll talk on that one, because I don't want this video to get too long. Hello. Okay. So, in question number four, it says, which of the statement is true about... Um, the graph of y is equal to 8 times uh, 0.25 to the x. This is an exponential function. And we just went over that, so that should be fairly fresh in your mind. Um, the x-coordinates, so the x-intercepts 
are 0.25 and zero. This is not true. They will never, this, this graph will never intersect or intercept the x-axis. Will never ever happen. So that is false. Number G. The coordinates of the y-intercept are 0, 8. Okay, well, um, that's that looks true. That is that is true. If I plug in y is equal to 8 times uh, 0 0.25 to the power of 0, that's going to give me y is equal to 8 times 1, which is equal to 8. So that gives me the coordinate point 0, 8. Um, number h, the equation of the asymptote is y x is equal to 0. That's false. It should be y is equal to 0 is the asymptote, not x is equal to 0. j, the graph includes the point 2, 1. So that means when x is 2, if I were to plug that into my equation, that it would come out to be 1. Um, well, let's see. So if I have y is equal to 8 times 0 0.25 to the power of 2. Let me go to my calculator. All right, so that's point two five two five times point two five times eight, which will give me point five, which that is not my y value. So I know that my answer choice that j is false. So the only possible answer choice is g. Number five. What is the range? of y is equal to negative x squared minus 2x plus 3. Uh, I'm going to make your life really easy. So we're going to go to our handy dandy calculator. And um, this is just like your calculator on your phone. That's a little, uh, negative x. So I'm going to go to y equals. So I'm going to clear this. So that's negative x squared minus 2x, minus 2x, oops, negative, oops, negative x squared minus 2x, and I believe that's plus 3. Let's double check. Yes, plus 3. And I'm going to go look at my table. So I'm going to go look at my table, and I'm looking for my vertex. Okay, let's see. Hold on, let me see my table. Great, make sure my table settings. Well, actually, we can do this even easier. Let's go look at their graph. So if I were to look at my graph here, and when you go to your graph on your phone, um, so my vertex is going to be there at negative 1, 4. Uh, on your, not on your phone. Uh, the calculator on your... Um, TI-84. So my vertex is at negative 4, or negative 1, 4. So my vertex is at negative 1, 4. And that means, and also notice my parabola is going to be down. This is a sad parabola. So that means I'm talking about a maximum value. So every value of y has to be less than or equal to that number, that y value that's in my vertex which is going to be y less than or equal to 4. Um, a is not going to be a chance because that's talking about the domain, neither is B. So now I'm looking at my answer choice, either C or D, and C is the only possible answer choice. Um, again, let's check, let's see if you're not sure. Remember, we can complete the square on this, and, and when this completing the square will give us our vertex. Um, but really the easiest way to do this is to look at your calculator and get your... Um, Vertex, your maximum point on your calculator. Number six, uh, which expression is equivalent to 144? 
or the expression given for all positive values for k and r. This is related to the power rule. So this is 144 to the power 1 half. This is k, oops, k squared times 1 half. And this is r to the 14th times 1 half. Now, since it's a power rule, that means that we're multiplying everything. So 144, remember this 1 half, that's the same thing as saying the square root of 144. The square root of 144 is 12. So that eliminates g and that eliminates h, okay? 2 times 1 half will give me k to 1. Now, the mistake that they made here, if somebody chose that as the answer choice, they probably didn't distribute that one half all the way and forgot to distribute it to each term. Um, and then again, so 14 times one half, that's gonna give me R to the seventh, which gives us our answer choice, F. Uh, the graph shows the height of an object in feet above the ground T seconds after it was launched from the ground. Um, this quite simply is you're just going to look for your, oops, dang it. Do, 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 do. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Goodness. Okay, here we go. Uh, let's see, how long is my video going? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this one in the next video because I don't want it to get too long.